I have a story about a patient who came in recently, and this story personifies something that I have talked about incessantly over the last few years. The patient was treated 10 years ago to a good result. They had moderate crowding. It's a middle-aged woman, no periodontal issues, teeth nicely aligned. We gave her four sets of retainers, which would last her about 10 years. And she's been wearing them on a consistent basis, she says. But she was referred because in the last few years, she did develop some periodontal issues that she says has been in her family. I remember her mouth as being in good shape, but nonetheless, she had some periodontal surgeries. And despite the therapy that was successful, and despite some occlusal adjustment from the periodontist, the patient maintained some mobility of her anterior teeth with persistent frematis, which means mobility that is revealed by the bite. So the patient was sent to me with a note saying, please evaluate for occlusal trauma. Patient sits down in the chair. I immediately notice that her teeth are nicely aligned, just like they were at the end of treatment. Uh, I didn't pay as much attention to that at first as her occlusion. She had posterior contacts bilaterally, balanced bite. And so the periodontist, periodontist did a good job with the occlusal equilibration, and yet she has this persistent mobility. And so I then noticed that her teeth were not quite as straight. She brought her retainers with her. I asked her to put the retainers on. The retainers were going barely halfway up on the teeth. Now, I just said the teeth looked good, but they were not microscopically as good. I asked the patient, again, has she been consistent with the retainers? And her body language was very insistent, but she did say when she thought back that she had, at the time of the periodontal surgeries, she had been without her retainer to heal. Within even days or a few weeks, some people's teeth can move on a microscopic level, and the retainers, if they are made from a stiff material, are very unyielding and they can add pressure to the teeth. Sometimes that pressure can be corrective to realign the teeth, but quite often if the plastic can't adapt over the teeth fully, it causes some compression of the periodontal ligament. And for some people, especially if there are periodontal issues and some bone loss, mobility will ensue from this. I no longer make retainers that are very stiff, and I don't make four sets at the end of treatment. And I don't prescribe to any of these prescription plans that allow the patients to get repeated retainers without being seen by the dentist. This is an example of the patient's retainer wear causing a problem because they were wearing an ill-fitting retainer on teeth that had some compromise. The message here, in my opinion, is that retainers should have a little bit of give but most importantly, if a patient with, is without their retainers for a short period of time and the retainer then hurts upon reinsertion, you've got to educate your patient they need to come back. If the teeth have moved a little bit, they don't need retreatment. They just need a new retainer to fit over the teeth. So in this case, the diagnosis was not occlusal trauma as the periodontal, periodontists have thought, but it was retainer trauma, and this is something we have to be on the alert for. So periodontists, if you have any patients who have some mobility, you may want to just make as part of your routine questioning, not just do you have a retainer or a night guard, but does it fit absolutely perfectly? When was it made? Maybe have them bring it in, maybe suggest they go back to an orthodontist or just make a new one from a new scan that will fit perfect and passively.